start recording. So we'll yeah, all, watch. Oh yeah, 24 seven. So yeah, all the analysis has already been posted. So I hope you guys checked it out um, in the Telegram and the Discord chat. Uh, it's the swing trading analysis. So we're looking for the swing trading moves uh, for the week. And we'll pretty much just, you know, hop into it. If you guys have questions throughout the session, just ask in the chat and, uh, you know, we'll come back to that pair or what you had a question on at some point uh, during the during the webinar. Yeah, exactly. So this is going to be a kind of like intra week stuff, more swing trading. And uh, we're going to break down the potential for the week ahead. You know, we're going to show you guys multiple sides of the market, both bullish scenarios, bearish scenarios, and how you can benefit from from uh, either situation. So let's get into it and start sharing here. And we're going to kick it off with DXY. So we always take a look at DXY first because normally in terms of at least the majors, when you see DXY moving, you know, the US dollar, when you see that start to move, you'll see a lot of the majors move as well. You know, a lot of the volume will come from DXY. So it's kind of a good idea to, you know, see what's going on here. Are we ranging? Are we trending? Which direction? Uh, you know, how much volume have we seen in the past? Are we ready for an explosive move, news, et cetera? So it's always a good idea to see what's going on. And we always start off kind of just assessing the trend, right? We want to see where we've been what type of trend we're in right now. That way we can kind of get a better gauge for where price action is. And, um, you know, just make our analysis a little bit more clear in that way. So very bearish. If we look to the left here, we were for a while, we had a huge falling off, right? We broke through this weekly. That was kind of the transition back here from a more dominant bullish trend into a bearish trend, huge amount of volume, right? Break and retest, confirm lower high below the weekly, further bearish volume. Uh, consolidation above the monthly, and then again, further bearish volume. So it's been pretty crazy, super, super bearish lately. Um, and then we, you know, again, retested resistance here, remain bearish, started to consolidate, push back to the upside. And then again, the volume has just been the same, very, very large amount of volume, huge swings, overall, we're very bearish. And then more recently, we're breaking above this monthly now. So this is showing us a lot of bullish bullish movement, right? We're seeing a higher low above the monthly. That's good. You know, usually with that, you'll see a strong continuation like we did in the past here, right? We saw a higher low above the monthly and then a nice rally up towards uh, this resisting trend line somewhere between this zone uh, 93.8 and 92.5. So good amount of volume that we've seen once we finally establish a higher low above this level or a lower high below. So we're definitely looking to continue with that, right? We're looking to get up towards this 93.8 area. Let me just get rid of that. 93.8 area. And then there's also something interesting about this zone now too, where price action is, is if we look to the left, this is a an established range in the past. So this becomes an area of, of interest now, especially since price action is breaching into this zone, right? We know that this level has held a support very strongly in the past, and this level has held as resistance very strongly in the past. So um, just good to kind of note, we are in a range now, so this may, this information may come into play, um, may be very, very useful uh, for the coming week if this continues bullish. So let's go to the four hour, get a closer look, see what's going on. So here's that range I was talking about, right? We've kind of been stuck in this range for a little while, and this is that area we're looking to get into, but we're not quite there yet. Yes, we're breaking into this zone, but we've yet to see really a higher low. So ideally, we want to see a bullish break of the range, retest, get some higher lows, and then we'll make our way towards the upside here, uh, up towards 93.8. Okay, so that's ideally what we want to see happen. That's definitely the most likely, and uh, it's a pretty you know conservative outlook for the dollar. So uh, you know could be a pretty big possibility. Now the bearish outlook for this, the bearish scenario, is simply that it continues to range. So that would mean a reversal at this area, and then we'd see a short-term bearish dollar. Right, maybe for you know the till Wednesday, till Thursday, maybe the duration of the week. We'll see. But you know, really, when you see ranges, the best way to play them is to simply wait for the break. You know, higher low above. If it does break lower, we're looking for a lower high below to confirm that, and then look for price action to drop towards key support. But for right now, this is definitely the two setups that are either one of these is going to happen, and you know, one of them is more likely You're bullish probably. But we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. All right, so that's looking like it's looking pretty good for this week. DXY. Let's go over to AU, first tradable pair. So again, 
go to the daily. We're gonna go ahead and grab our overall trend, right? We were bullish for a while, very, very strong rally. Uh, then we had this very clear defined range. We we're just consolidating for a long time in here. And then finally we broke lower, retested, got the lower high, and now we're bearish here on the daily. So with that information, let's go to the four hour, see if this time frame lines up with that bearish sentiment as well. And it does. Clear characteristics, lower lows, lower highs, so on and so on, breaking support, retesting. So definitely bearish. But what's interesting here is, well, first we have our two most significant zones weekly, which is way up here, very far away from price action. And then our support 074 right here. That's the daily zone. So this is very interesting because again, big support level, but we also have a descending wedge at the bottom of a bearish leg. So this, and this is a pretty good size one too. So like this strongly, this pattern strongly suggests that it's going to reverse, but based on price action and what we've seen, this thing is, it's going to dump. I mean, look at this, this volume here. So this is an interesting example where the pattern could kind of go either way. Doesn't really line up with what the pattern is supposed to do, but um, you know, we're, we're favoring price action and support and resistance and where price action is in this trend uh, over the pattern itself. So it's just good to see, you know, when you do get kind of conflicting signals, um, you know, what to consider more so. And in this case, you know, we're at support. It's either going to reverse or break. It's overall very bearish on all time frames. Therefore, this is the most likely scenario. It's going to drop, right? That's why we're kind of leaning that direction. We're going to ride the trend, wait for the break, and this volume should pick up even more. So ideally, significant break into this lower area in between these two zones, pull back, look for that lower high, and then we're going to enter short down towards, uh, and then target down towards uh, 073 and other support levels. All right, so this is looking pretty good right now. It's definitely heading in the right direction, but need a few more confirmations before we can pull the trigger. Um, the bullish scenario here would be the reversal that, you know, would make sense for the pattern that we're seeing. Big reversal, break of these lower highs here, right? This set right under resistance at 075, and then a higher low above that we can then enter on because uh, that would confirm, you know, a true break, true transition, and then there'd be a good amount of uh, pips to, to trade here. I mean, we target all the way up to the weekly and then reanalyze at that point. So that's AU. I mean, this it's pretty clear looking. Just need to wait on a few confirmations. All right, let's move over to AJ. On any questions? Nope, not yet. Good. Good, good. Again, yeah, if you guys have any questions about any of these analyses, um, it's probably best to ask them as I'm going through them. You know, I'll try and answer them here uh, as I can, and Angela will as well. So let's move over to AJ. All right, so let's go to the daily first. This one's not as clear as AU. Usually they are very correlated, but um, sometimes one of them will just show to have a better setup. That seems to be AU right now, but we'll see how this week plays out. Um, so what's AJ doing on the daily, right? We're looking for the trend. Overall, we were, were bullish. Huge area of consolidation, you know, as we saw in AU as well, and then a huge transition, right? Break lower, retest, multiple lower highs and lower lows. So we're newly bearish here on the daily, uh, considering you know, all the price action here. So yeah, definitely bearish. So let's go back down to the four hour, take a look at some scenarios, see if this time frame lines up as well. Okay, so yep, very, very bearish. No real pattern here. We did see that pattern on AU. On AJ, we don't really have it. We have kind of a just classic break and retest, good structure formation, some patterns, um, you know, smaller patterns and such. But overall, very bearish. Recent lower low was down here around 81.3, pulled back, got the lower high off the 50% fib level. But it was a confluence area because, you know, recent broken structure. And then we also got a nice MA cross. So that turned out pretty well. There is a head and shoulders as well. And then it dumped, played out great as a, uh, Last week's analysis suggested, but now where do we go from here, right? We're at 0%, we're at the low. Either it's gonna continue with this volume and shoot down towards you know, our next our next target, which happens to be a confluence level as well, 80.75, huge support, and then our negative 27% uh, FIB level. So that's a likely possibility. Price action will just continue to drop. Won't really give us much entry opportunity unless you're, you know, you're already in the trade. Um, so that could happen, and then we'll reanalyze. Or if it pulls back off the 0%, you know, find some support here, pulls back, look for it to hit a FIB level, look for it to get to another confluence area where it could potentially form a lower high. 
if we see the lower high, um, we would then look to enter on that, you know, with uh, bearish uh, setups confirming that. So this would be really ideal right here, this blue trade path. That's probably the most conservative setup um, out of all, all these, honestly. And one that would have a really good risk to reward. Um, and it would make a lot of sense. You know, this would be a good area to retest. It didn't pull back as far as I would have liked, you know, to cut the touch and uh, retest the neckline of this little head and shoulders pattern. So this would be nice to see if it did give us that retest and more confirmation that it's going to continue. Yeah, Nick, if you haven't bearish. noticed, uh, the chart is actually offline. FXCM, I, I guess they have some issues right now. And uh, there's no data for like the live marker right now. Well, but that's a shame. Yeah, but there is for other brokers, but it's just, it really doesn't matter because you guys are doing swing trading analysis anyway. Um, and the market hasn't moved much, but if you go across all your, you know, if you see how gold is on another broker and DXY yeah. was on another broker, so it was good. I just want to see something real quick. I just want to see how far off it is. I mean, either way, it's, you know, it's not like it's a scalping strategy, guys, which is good. Um, it's kind of be accurate through the week, you know, unless there's some huge, you know, surge of volume right now on a Sunday, which is unlikely. But let's just jump over to an Awanda chart. So, yeah. So we're pushing a little bit lower. So it's going with option B right now. Let's go back up to, yeah, okay. So it's, you know, relatively, it's actually a little bit lower now. So this is really playing out. So it looks that it's gonna continue lower, but either way, you know, if it does pull back, that would be an ideal setup. Uh, we'll reanalyze if it drops to support here, but the bullish setup would be a break of 82.2. Obviously you wanna see a significant push above this this level here, see some higher lows confirming that and then continuing with, you know, a, a nice bullish trend there. And that'd be, that'd probably be a lower time frame trade. You wouldn't necessarily be full blown bullish on the four hour yet. Really this, this level is in play still here at the weekly at 8325. So you just gotta be cautious if you're taking long setups, you know, it's been so, so bearish. It can actually pull back quite a bit and still be considered bearish overall. So that's, that's kind of the downside when you see a huge, huge amount of volume, but um, you know, it's always, it always pays off to be, to take conservative setups. And that's why we kind of label both parts of the market and, you know, offer a few scenarios here. So let's just check chat real quick. Then I'll move on to UJ. Yeah. Wanda's up. This should, I mean, FXCM, this should probably uh, not take too long for their servers to come back up and yeah, not, not too much of a worry, but yeah, thanks for pointing that out. So let's move over to UJ. This one looks pretty good for this week. Um, very, very clear looking. Makes our options very, very, you know, simple to choose from. So overall, we're here on the daily. Very bullish. I mean, clear to see. Not as much volume here. You know, not as strong as a trend as we saw in the past, like more recently. Very, very strong bullish trend. Now it's kind of forming more, more traditional structure. It's not just taking off in one direction, which is good and bad. Could could be a pro, could be a con, but let's let's drop down to the four hour, get a little more detailed in the analysis. Um, but overall, we're bullish. All right, so let's see if this lines up as well. Four hour, so the four hour actually is bearish, right? We reached this one eleven five zone, and then kind of reversed. Why is this one not extended? There we go. Zoom in a little bit here. So we actually rallied pretty high into resistance. 111.5, but this was an analysis from a few weeks ago. We we're expecting it to reverse, and we knew that it could drop quite a bit and still be considered bullish because it was just so, so bullish, so much bullish volume except into the market. It was so far away from the supporting trend line, away from you know this 200 EMA and the averages. It was just way, way up there. So it could have pulled back to 110 and remained bullish, which it did exactly. And now we saw it test its zone a couple times. It tested this uh, structure zone here, lower time frame, and now it's kind of consolidating, right? So from here, we really just want to wait, just sit on this one for a second, wait for it to show us something significant, something we can kind of make a play off of. So ideally, break above this consolidation. You know, definitely, you want to see conviction here. Good, significant break uh, into this upper zone, pull back with a higher low, and then this could be a great trade, great risk to reward. Uh, we'll be targeting back towards the prior highs into resistance at 111.5. Okay, so that's the most likely scenario, lines up with the trend. Uh, based on what we're seeing, we only really need a few confirmations for that to happen. 
and uh, definitely would be a great trade. So what would have to happen for us to consider UJ bearish here? Clear break of 110, lower high below. That'd just be a classic transition. And then we'd look to enter short on some bearish setups, target lower into other key support levels. Okay, so this is uh, looking pretty good this week. Not bad, just need to seek some conviction here. Let's check chat again. Okay. All right, so let's jump over to EJ. So this one is probably the less, it's just, it's not that easy, not that clear to see uh, what's going on here on EJ. But let's just go to the daily time frame real quick. Get the trend. Overall, again, very bullish. We were here on EJ as well. We are now newly bearish, right? We broke uh, our weekly zone, broke key structure, pulled back, got some lower highs. We're below the MAs now. We're heading lower with good bearish volume. So definitely bearish. We did just hit a support level. So let's drop down to the four hour, see what's going on now. But again, definitely bearish. So huge amount of volume here. And this, this may look a little difficult for some people in here, but this, this is just kind of an, like a tough situation for how price action is now. It's not the easiest to see. You know, we are at 0%. You know, we didn't really form, we didn't test structure again here after we had this bearish leg, which had a ton of volume. So this honestly could pull back quite a bit and still remain bearish. So this is hard to see because it's going to take a little bit for this to play out. You know, even though we're here on the four hour, this is such a, like this 131.3 here is just seems so far away. You know, and then it could still be bearish at that point. So it, not the easiest setup. It'll take a while for this to play out. Probably a later week trade if we do see this kind of pull all the way back up here. You know, got a nice little double bottom confirmation. And then we'd look to take shorts off the 38.2 level. Okay, so if that happens, that's where we'll be looking. Um, or this could just start dumping from now, you know, at the 0%. Um, I don't like taking trades, you know, this low uh, or this close to a 0% fit level. I really like playing it off structure. I like entering on strong, significant lower highs, not kind of, you know, a minor flicker of price action like this here, especially when you just look left, just to how price action has been moving in the past with how much volume we've had. I'm not, I wouldn't be, excuse me, too confident in a setup uh, right now targeting down towards, you know, the negative 27 fib level. I'd much rather take this setup off of the 38.2 and target down towards the negative 27. Okay, I'm not going to force a trade here. I'll literally, I'll literally just wait for this, uh, this to play out and uh, wait for the market to come to me in this area. Okay. So that's the bearish setup um, for me to consider EJ bullish. Honestly, again, it could pull back all this way and still be bearish. So I really need to clear that zone entirely. And then this has been kind of an area, uh, you know, kind of a ranging area in the past. So I really want to clear that as well. So it has to prove a lot. To, for me to consider this bullish. Now I know some people are in here, you know, thinking you could definitely take a long setup on a lower time frame. By all means, you can. But for the sake of swing trading, uh, these are the most conservative options, and this is what I recommend if you're going to trade uh, EJ and hold for a few days. You, know, you want you want one of these these significant moves to play out to really capitalize on. All right, so that's EJ. I'm going to wrap this up with gold. And honestly, I wish this was a better note. Because gold has been underwhelming the last couple of weeks, to say the least. Um, overall, we're very bearish, right? Definitely bearish. I mean, this pulled back quite a bit here, even off a really nice rally, reversed, and then shot all the way through multiple, multiple uh, support levels. And then it dropped below 1800, consolidated for a while, and now it's pulling back. We're at our, our weekly zone at 1825, and then also at a 50% fib level. You know, the MAs are right there as well. So, it's not the cleanest chart, but we are overall still bearish. So let's now go to the four hour and see what's going on. Let's zoom out a little bit. So the thing with this one, oh, these fibs are kind of really extended. So the thing with this one is it's kind of at the key level, right? So there's, there's two main levels here, the weekly 1825 level and then 1800. 1800 is a higher time frame level. And generally if we're above it, if we're seeing higher lows, Above it, we're bullish. If we're seeing lower highs below it, we're bearish. Uh, right now, we are above it with a crazy amount of consolidation and some rejection as well. So really, I just want to see price action finish what it's doing in between these two zones and give us something a little more concrete. So if I'm going to go bullish, again, this is 
kind of the uh, the upper key zone. So I want to see this break. We'll get that higher low, and then we can start looking at long setups. But if it breaks below 1800, we want to see that lower high, and then we are back into shorts all day long. Back into shorts. So let's do this real quick. Here we go. So I'm not really interested in what price action is doing here in between, again, the weekly and 1800. So let it do its thing. Wait to capitalize on either of these scenarios. Uh, however, I am leaning a little bit more towards uh, the bearish scenario here, just because I always choose the trend over anything else. I always just try and ride the trend. And uh, yeah, this has been bearish for a while. So we'll see this play out. We'll see what gold does. But yeah, this this kind of sucks lately for the last few weeks here on gold. I mean, but it is what it is sometimes. It'll come back. We'll get some good opportunities on gold again soon, hopefully. So quick recap, I did I covered DXY, covered AU. Whoops. AJ, UJ, EJ, and gold. Hopefully these FXCM charts come back online soon. But uh, Angelo's got some more for you guys, so... He's going to share up and show you what he's got. I'll go ahead and share up again, guys. If you have any questions, post in the chat. We had one person ask about um, the economic events. If you don't have your economic events at the bottom here, um, what you can do is just go ahead and go to your settings, go to events, and you can do show only future events right here. Um, so without having to go on, FX book or anything, you can see the relevant events based on the currency pair that you are on. So we can see with this that we have some events coming up. We've got the US dollar um, or USD, some not, not high impact events. The high impact events will be in red. Um, so the first high impact event will be tomorrow or July 21st. So in three days, building permits number. So nothing to really worry about early in the week, you know, for the dollar news wise. Um, let's just start from the top here. So let's go to the weekly. We're on NZD USD. I already did, you know, my analysis, published it so you guys can go and look at it. But just zooming out a bit, we can clearly see that we've got support right here. So let's just scroll out. We've got a ton of, you know, support and resistance around this zone at 6.8. 800 so we've got resistance resistance support 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 resistance 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 and now we're back in that area and look how price action or the candle forms last week so last week we can see right here we had this doji candle so this is a reversal type candle so we're seeing the market start to slow up slow up so i'm expecting that some sort of pop to the upside considering how price action is forming right there. Let's go down to the lower time frame. So I'm gonna hit the four hours. So I'll normally go from the weekly time frame to the four hour time frame when doing the swing trading. And we can see here that we had lower lows and lower highs. So price action or market structure was showing us a downtrend very clearly um, up until this area. So we had lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. And then look what happened right here. We had a break of resistance. So we had uh, support here, resistance here, resistance here, support here. Let me just take this off. And then we formed this little lower high right here. So we have that double top. So structure formed right there. Then we just broke above it. And now we're seeing whether we can find support in this area. I am going to take buys um, on this one because of two reasons. One, we already did kind of double bottom near this weekly support level. So it's very likely that we, this could be the bottom here and we could start to get an uptrend. Um, and two, we do have a break of structure, this level right here where we broke it, retested it. Look at this candle. This is a bullish candle right here. So I am taking a long. My stops are at 69,350. My targets are at 71,250. And yeah, so that's my trade for NZD USD um, early this week. You know, obviously the market isn't, opened up on FXCM, so we can't really see what's going on, but I did check it on my phone, not much movement. It's only like 10 pips away from where we're at now. Um, and yeah, if it ends up breaking lower, so really if it ends up breaking support here, we, we then can anticipate this to go short. So what I'm gonna do is if price does manage to come down and break this 
level down here. Hold on one second. If price does manage to come down and break support, we're gonna exit on the retest of this level right here. And then we're gonna actually look to take shorts on this um, to the downside. So again, this is trade number one is along right from where we're at now. And then trade number two would be uh, this, this short potential short opportunity if it does end up breaking uh, support right there. So I'm just gonna map this one out. This is trade scenario one right here. And then this would be trade scenario number two. Our targets would be this weekly level down here. I'm just gonna put it at the median right there. And then we'd have our stops right around two to one at least. So stops would be above this previous high, above the resistance right there. Um, so yeah, that's my two trade ideas for NZD. USD, I am currently in the long, so we'll see um, how that shakes out during the week this week. Just clean this up a little bit. Take this off. Let's go next to USD CHF. Um, so this one, just starting up on the weekly time frame. On the weekly, we have two key levels here. Um, so the first level, we have support right here, support right here. And then we have resistance here, resistance here. If I zoom in, or I'll zoom out a little bit actually, I have this next level marked right here. <clears throat> so we have support here, support here, support here, support here. And then we have some resistance all along this level. And then as we can see, price just kind of rejected that. Looking at price action last week, uh, we had this bullish candle but it failed um, to actually break above the previous bearish candle. So I'm considering this a retracement. So the main thing that I look for on the weekly is just where are our key levels and then where are, you know, bearish and engulfing, bullish and engulfing, what is price action kind of telling us? So this is telling me that we could have more downward movement. We'll go down to the four hour and then four hour time frame. I did map out this like four hour key level. So this is based on resistance, resistance, support, support, resistance, resistance. And then as you can see to end the week last week, we just kind of dove right off of that level. So that's my signal right there. USD CHF, these two bearish candles, multiple confirmations. You know, we've got the, the key level, we've got the, the previous high right here. So we're testing the resistance. We've got the price action forming. So yeah. Uh, entries here, stops are up here, 92350, and then targets are going to be down here. This is a swing trade. Um, just keep in mind, we do have two ideas right now, one for NZD USD and one for USD CHF, and they're both in the same direction. So they're basically relying on the dollar going short. If we come up and look at the dollar right now and move up to kind of the weekly time frame, like the dollar is actually pretty bullish in the sense that the last few weeks, you know, since May has been in an uptrend, but we are about to retest uh, this support and resistance level. So I'm just gonna clear this right here and let's just take a look at where I would place my level. So I'm just gonna move this back a little bit so we can have all of this. So pretty much just from you know, one look, we can see we have support here, support here, support there. And we have kind of all this consolidation broke below, but we have support there. And then we have all support along this area. And then ultimately we have that resistance, which kind of validates this zone for me. So I'm kind of expecting a reversal from the dollar um, off of this level right now. Um, let's see right here. So looking at this bullish candle, obviously, you know, bull bullish engulfing from this previous kind of consolidation. So it did kind of break out. So coming all the way down to the four hour, I mean, the thing's bullish. The trend is bullish right here. Obviously it's been forming these higher lows. So this thing really needs to, to do something like this uh, to start to break the trend that it's currently in. We need to see like a break of this trend line, a break of this support level right here to get that momentum to shift over. So keep that in mind, the dollar is fairly bullish, which would mean that, you know, taking this trade, this thing could head lower. This thing could head lower, you know, ultimately and break down. And then we would take that, that short opportunity 
Um, and then also with USDCHF, you know, this thing could end up popping up and then we'd find that second opportunity to go long. So definitely have two ideas mapped out for this one. If the dollar does start to, you know, go down, these are going to be two very simple trades early in the week. If the dollar just continues to find, uh, you know, like pushes up, just continues to find buyers, then those two trade ideas are going to turn into the latter idea, which is going to be a short on the uh, NZD dollar and then a long on USDCHF. So let's go next to GU. This one um, I actually like a lot right now. We've got the weekly time frame. So price pushed down, and then we had this little retracement, and then last week ended with this bearish engulfing candle. So there's literally no wick on this. So it's kind of just telling me, like if I zoom out, these are two levels. So we have like support here, support here, resistance, 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 resistance. And then down here, look at this level, resistance, resistance. All along this area, uh, we did have a little support where it came up, tested it, and then shot up. I say little support, but like look how, just look at the movement from the level. Like this thing shot up about 80 pips or whatever, 800 pips, not 80, 800 pips, 850 to the upside. So this is a pretty wide zone um, that we have going on right now. And I do anticipate it actually moving lower considering how price action is forming. Coming down to the four hour time frame, it's very clear that we're in a downtrend, forming these lows, lower highs, low, lower high, lower low, lower high. And then last week we just broke the support. So we broke that support. We did form that like mini high or low. We actually broke that. Now we're down here. Um, so pretty much what I'm looking for is a retest of this four hour level. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit lighter. So I am looking for a retest of this zone. I have this marked on the four hour time frame based on support here, support here, little resistance there, support here. So this is just an area where price has come into once, twice, three times, four times, mainly once and twice where it's found support and moved pretty dramatically. Um, so once price does get in that area, I am expecting some sort of resistance but considering we're all the way down here, price could just continue lower. Remember, if the dollar does continue to go strong, this could then become our best trade for this week. And how we would take advantage of this is we obviously see these lows right here, this low right here. We would need to see a break of these lows followed by a retest of this four hour zone. So I'm just gonna zoom out because this zone does have validity beyond kind of where we're at right now. So I, I brought this zone all the way from this area. We have all this resistance right here. Then we have some support in this area where price was consolidating around this area. Obviously look at this support shot to the upside. So that's like a key kind of indicator to me that that's a, a serious zone. And then we have support here, support here. So once price comes down to this area, what I'm getting at is it's going to shoot in one direction. What we could see is a little retest of this and then shoot up into our other area of interest, which is all the way up here. Um, but you know, if the dollar does continue to go strong, what's more likely is like a quick break and retest and then get short on this one um, to the downside. So we'll be patient on this. No trades as of now, I'm not shorting it yet. Um, there's simply too much kind of at stake uh, that could happen in this area to take shorts right now. So let's go over to USD CAD next. I wish we could actually see where price is at right now, but I'm sure it hasn't really moved much. So let's see right here, weekly time frame. So we can see that, and if you've been following us, I've gone over this like on every call the last couple of weeks, we've been riding this weekly bearish trend on UCAD, breaking support, retesting as resistance, breaking support, retesting, breaking support, retesting, breaking support, retesting. Now look where we're at. We came down, we actually broke resistance right here. So this is in a kind of reversal pattern now. And last week ended very bullish going with that dollar strength. Um, but I still have this marked as like a weekly resistance level. We'll see, you know, right now it's just very bullish. We could see it reject this area, but coming down to the four hour time frame, pretty much this thing is just bullish. You know, last week we had bullish analysis that held at this zone, shot up. That, that was what the trade idea was on Sunday. Now, we can't do anything at the moment 
considering where it's at, what I'll, I would like to see is price to pop up above this resistance and retest. And that's when we'll actually um, take our long opportunity. So the long idea is certainly still valid. I just want to wait for a break above this resistance. If we look back, this is a serious four hour level. We have support here. Let's move this. We have support all along this area. Then we have resistance all along this area. And obviously you can see it already rejected at one time with this wick. So if price does make it above here, we're going to buy it. Um, if we do get a little break below where it gets below this weekly level that we have marked, that's when I'll start to sell. So no immediate trades on like today for UCAD, but UCAD and GU are going to be are like in, in the middle of the week. Um, we'll see if we get like any sort of trade opportunities with that. So next let's go to GBP JPY. All right, so this one is interesting. Let's bump up to the weekly right here. All right, so weekly time frame. as we can see, we have our levels marked. And on here we have this upper level is based on resistance here, support here, support here. We had a little bit of consolidation there and then we have this big resistance right there. And then as you can see right here, rejected it. So we already hit that high. Then we have this low down here. What is that based on? That's based on resistance, support, resistance, 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 support. And then as we can see more resistance, more resistance all along that area. So I'm expecting price to actually head lower into this area. Last week's candle closed, no wick. Tells us that there's more sellers than buyers, but at the same time, normally there is some sort of retracement kind of following that move, um, especially on GJ. So I'm expecting a pullback into this area. I do not want to short right now. There's so much room for this to retrace. So pretty much, I'm going to just change the colors of these. These are my four hour levels right here get the marked up. So entry number one, if price does come up back into this 152, 800 area, I'm definitely gonna try to short it. Um, this would be a retest of this key level. Also kind of would be a retest of this previous high point right there. And then we've got our fibs on here, that's a 61.8. So multiple confirmations in that area. And then we have entry number two, if price does manage to blow all the way up, I will then look to take a short up here if I zoom out. This is just based on my key level. We have support all along this area, resistance all along this area, support, resistance. Um, so again, this is my kind of next area that I'm looking for short opportunities. I will not take any buys on GJ unless it does get above this 153, 700 area. That's when I'll start to consider buys. I mean, just look at the trends. You know, the trend is your friend and the trend is certainly very bearish right now. We could change this up. So the trend is very bearish, you know, so this is, this would be the best entry, like realistically right there. So that's where I'm going to try to play this one. We'll see. I mean, obviously price is all the way down here right now. So it would have to pull back. It could just continue to fall right to our targets, which it may, but you know, if it does decide to reverse, that's when we'll get our short opportunity. So that's all the pairs that I have for you guys went over a lot in a short amount of time, but everything is posted in telegram uh, and this is recorded. So if you need to go back and watch it, it will be on um, YouTube. And I went over NU, USEF, both of these uh, pairs I'm in trades on. So I've already entered NZD USD. I've already entered USD uh, CHF. I'm waiting on trades for GU and UCAD. And then GJ, I'm waiting on a trade um, as well. So that's pretty much it for the analysis. We're just going to hop into some announcements. Um, if you guys want to get involved with the funded trader, it's 15% off plus 115% uh, return if you guys pass and get a withdrawal. So that is live until midnight. You can use the code the funded trader um, to get that. And then we are doing a free trial this week for the rapid signal. So I'll go ahead and pull that up so you guys can take a look. So I know some people want to see like what actually goes down in the rapid signals channel. So I'll go ahead and share that for you guys. All right. So we give the trade with stop loss, take profit. There are about 
10 to 20 trades um, per day in the group. It is indices, crypto, and Forex, uh, and commodities as well. And trades are given normally during the New York session and the Asian session, but there are some in the London as well. We also do live sessions in the signal room. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we go live and trade the intraday strategy. So Forex League has a swing strategy and an intraday strategy. So you can learn both strategies kind of through the rapid signals uh, group. And then it does come with a course um, as well. So we have a full course. You guys can get it in the pinned message up here, as you can see right there is the course. You also will automatically get connected to it if you do purchase. So normally it's $50 per month. Um, but it is a free trial this week. So definitely get involved um, if you haven't already. So yeah, so Nick, it's Nick Shane, it's $50, um, but it's a free trial right now. So definitely uh, get involved. Let me see if I can let you get the camera back on. There you go. All right. So definitely if you're trying to do the funded trader, I would get involved with the sale. Uh, we do have five new traders going live this week, which is going to be super interesting. So yeah, all info is inside of the telegrams, guys. Make sure um, you are involved. We still do have a giveaway going on in here as well. I will put a reminder about it, but I'm just going to go to the top. We're giving away three posters. Um, so three people will get, um, you know, will be able to select any poster they like. All you have to do is follow the three instructions which is subscribe to our YouTubes and join the funded trader telegram. Uh, we will pick a winner. We'll pick a winner pretty much tonight. So it says Sunday at 8 PM Eastern time. So I'll pick a winner um, at some time tonight and we will uh, get that over to whoever wins. If you want to get involved in the free trial, I'll post inside of the telegram after the call. Um, so you guys can, uh, can get started with that. And that, that's pretty much it. You know, another, another Sunday market blitz in the books yeah. and it's uh time it's go time. Yeah. looks like a good week ahead guys. Lots of opportunity giveaways on the, in the market, you know, and so on. So yeah, excited for this week. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in to another Sunday market blitz. Sunday market blitz number freaking uh, what? hundred. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. 150, 200. I don't know, but it's, it's yeah. good though. These are always great. <laughs> These are always oh great. yeah. We're, we're going in. So yeah, I hope, hope you guys, you know, enjoy the week. We'll be back at the end of the week on Friday. We'll, we'll go, we'll cover all the analysis and uh, if you guys need us, just hit us up in telegram. Yeah. Sounds good guys. Take all care right. guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. Everybody.